classroom that I'm very fond of. It's on the campus of St. John's University. I've told you before, I've got a little part-time kind of job down here. And uh, it's not at St. John's University, per se. It's at the College of St. Benedict, but it's kind of one school. And I was down here this afternoon um, after my Central Lakes gig today, being up there with you, which is my main work now. And I attended a meeting on talking to you about regarding uh, dust days, chuck dust all over me. I work in a garage and do uh, oil. Um, I'm a school teacher, so I'm covered with chuck dust. And I thought we'd talk a little bit more about uh, structuring essays. In the previous video, we talked about the idea that essays can take different forms. Uh, they can be descriptive, they can be narrative, they can be persuasive, uh, they, can, uh, they can provide information. But let's talk a little bit about uh, what happens when we start creating an essay. Nobody sits down that I know and plans out an essay. Nobody says, no, they might maybe should. I'd like this first paragraph to do this. I'd like the three or four body paragraphs to do these things. And I'd like the conclusion to do something entirely different. Most people that I know sit down at a computer and start searching for meaning. You know, they're just kind of going out this blind alley looking for something to say. I know you've done this. I know you've sat and looked at a blank computer screen and spent a half an hour thinking about what you wanted the introduction would work like. And then you write the entire rest of the essay in 20, 25 minutes. Um, but if we kind of think about uh, essays in terms of controlling the unit of meaning, maybe things might be easier for you. Forgive me, I can't remember if I've spoken in this way in the previous videos. But it, it goes like this. The smallest unit of meaning that we have is a word. If you pile enough of those together, lucky, you're going to get some sentences. If you pile enough sentences together, you get a unit of meaning called a, a paragraph. Paragraph, I think I've said this before, comes from an ancient word. Para means mark, and graphos means that which is written. It's a pretty old idea. Um, the idea that uh, we've uh, got to control these different units. We start with words, then we move to sentences, and then it takes a little bit of guile to make sure that you control paragraphs, and uh, if, they're, if they build up and if you're lucky, you might end up with an essay, you might end up with a novel, you might end up with a you know, good, good, goodness knows what. But we start with the idea of, of, of that. <laughs> Ultimately, you want an essay that does what you want it to do. Now, one of the things that I don't want to do is stand before you in this old classroom and prescribe uh, what you should do. English teachers are famous constrainers. We are famous for standing in rooms like this and saying, don't do this, don't do this, uh, and so forth. Don't you dare start a sentence with a conjunction, even though Fowler's modern English usage allows for it. Don't you dare have a sentence in a preposition. You know what, you can do that too. It's a little bit awkward, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we've heard all of this too. Make sure that you have an attention getting first sentence, as if I'm going to stop reading if you don't get my attention in, in, in the first sentence. Let's just uh, start, start with the basics. Um, I have students every year who refuse to put titles on papers. Let's just start with this simple idea. Uh, this happened to me a year ago when I was just a vagabond roaming the earth and I smelled the chalk, right? I was at St. Paul State and I had uh, students, a student, who just announced, uh, I'm using a different word, but I'll put one in her mouth. She said, titles are super, superfluous. You know, they don't matter. They're not that important. And I said, why wouldn't you name a paper? Why wouldn't you give it a name? Uh, I tried to convince her that titles are an available means of persuasion. You know, there's kind of an art to it. Uh, you know, give the paper a name, I said. She just didn't want anything to do with it. You know, and St. Paul State a year ago, I looked down and I saw that uh, there was a document camp. And in desperation, I had my old phone, by the way, this flip out phone, and I had pictures of my sons. I said, why would you want a nameless oil thing? Okay, name the paper. She said, no, I'm not going to. Okay, and then I said, how about this? And I flipped open my phone and I set it on the dock hand, which of course sent onto the screen the image of my two sons. And I said,
said, you, you know what? These are my sons. And um, I named them. I gave them names. Um, you know, made her laugh and stuff. I can't remember if she tied her papers after that or after. Socrates thinks of all pieces of things that we write as, as unruly children. Uh, Socrates was very nervous about writing. His idea was that if you take a piece of writing and send it out into the world, it might uh, uh, do things that you don't want it to do. Get in the china shop, so to speak. It's another place where I've seen uh, essays likened to, to children. And uh, I don't think I'll tease out that metaphor too far. But the first thing I want to encourage you to do when you're writing a paper, put a title on it. Name it. And I wouldn't title it at the beginning. Wait till you get to the end. Something. Otherwise, it's a nameless order. I'd like to loan uh, some ways of, uh, that, that I think about the essays. Um, now, later on, we'll talk about different types of introductions. Aristotle allows for four different types and two different types of conclusions. But just to begin with, I'd like to tell you that um, the ancient way of thinking about introductions was with a word called exordium. Exordium means quite literally a leading into. And when English teachers pick up papers, when anybody picks up an essay in the world of academia, whether it's here, across the St. Ben, St. Paul State, Central Lakes College, Bemidji, wherever we are reading papers, when we pick them up, the sun's getting bright. The first thing we want to know is, where are we going? Where are you taking me? Where are we, where, where are we going? Where are we going? In, in, in a way, I tell students that when I pick up an essay, it's kind of like being taken by the hand, because I want to know what the topic and I want to know where I'm being led. Uh, what, what, is, what is the destination? How are we going to get there? We'll talk about um, writing as a journey later in this uh, long semester. So that's kind of thing one. I don't, I don't think of this as the introduction. I think of it as the exordium because I uh, owe so much to the Greeks. Uh, somewhere in here, I want to know what the aim of your paper is. I want to know the intention. And I want to tell you something else. The control of intentionality is not easy. Especially, well, I don't want to say that. I want to say this instead. You've got to establish an intention, a purpose, and then this essay is going to fulfill it, right? Um, you've got to be able to control it. If you're a divergent thinker, I guess this is what I want to say. You've got to watch it because plenty of people will get midway into an essay and say, wait a minute, I've got a new idea. I feel like writing about this now. Journey wise, it's kind of like taking the wheel of a car or a truck and just pitching it. And you know, you're in a ditch, and then pretty soon you're in uh, North Dakota. Not that I've got anything against North Dakota. You want to get from here to here without digressing or diverging.